Um, in this video, I am going to discuss dynamic named ranges and some conditional formatting tricks in order to format those correctly. So, okay, let me give you a scenario. Let's say I've got a row, or let's call it rows and columns, and make that five and five. I'm gonna set up a silly spreadsheet here. I use this feature a lot when building tools Let's see, those are inputs. Okay, so I use this feature a lot when building tools uh, where maybe I have an investment horizon that I change or that I want as an input. So it could be five years or 10 years. And if it's five years, then I wanna think about five rows of information. If it's 10, I want 10. And I want my spreadsheet to look reasonable. Okay, so I'm just gonna set up a sequence call here, which is dynamic, and it will take the input for the rows. I'm going to take the input for the columns, and that's probably good enough, right? So this is our sequence call. Maybe I'll make my columns two so it all fits here. All right, so this is my sequence call. Call It goes one, two, three, four, and so on. It's incrementing by one, starting at one, and it goes, fills the rows first. All right, if I change columns to one, two, rows to three, and so on, this, this, the output is dynamic. So the challenge, of course, is because the output is dynamic, naming it is hard or is more difficult, right? So right now I'd like to name this range, but if I change this to three columns, I would like to name this range. Okay, so the trick in this is a function called offset. Offset lets you start at a cell and find the contents of a cell relative to that cell. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the offset function to just simply return this range. So the reference is where we start. The, these are my offsets. So if I went two to the right and returned that cell, I would get um, cell F1, I get a three. So let's just do that just to demonstrate. Oops, Oops. two, that's two rows, sorry. There's two to the right, right, two columns. I'm not interested in that. What I'm actually interested in is the following feature. I can include a height, we'll do rows, select that reference, and a width, that's the number of columns. So this function call offset D1, my starting cell, zero, zero, meaning I start at my starting, I can stay at my starting cell, and then B1, which is the number of rows, B2, number of columns, that's going to return the range that contains the entire all of this information. If I switch to two columns, you can see it updates automatically. Okay, so now there's a neat trick here. I'm just gonna, oh, I should talk through this. I did F2 to edit the cell, uh, Shift Home to select all of the text in the cell. You can do this in a bunch of different ways. Control C for copy. Okay. Control F3 brings up the name manager, new name, and we're gonna call this my data, and refers to, typically in refers to, we refer to some cell or range, but instead I'm gonna do refers to offset. Now the key thing here is that all of those cell references need to be locked. Um, otherwise, when you, when you refer to my data, it shifts around, so it's a little bit strange. So there's my new name. It refers to this offset. We'll close. Get rid of this. Let's go over here, maybe just here, and we go equals my data. And it brings up my data. If I do four rows, it does four rows. Three columns, it does three columns. Four columns, I have a spill error because this is overlapping with the original data. Okay, so now we've just created a named range which refers to this data and is dynamic depending on the information I give it. 
So that's pretty useful. It's pretty. It's a nice feature, and it means that in formulas and so on. Again, usual named range things. I like named ranges because my formulas become more informative. And so in a formula, I can refer to this data as my data as opposed to anything else. Now, a couple of little things, uh, quibbles about this, which um, Excel, I don't know why they've done it this way, but they have. If I go, go to, so Control G or F5, go to, you see there are no named ranges in the go to box. I can type in my data and it will take me there, but I don't see it in this list that I normally would see it in. The same is true for the name box. There's nothing in the name box, but if I go somewhere else, nothing in the name box and I type in my data, it takes me to my data. So for whatever reason, Excel has not allowed you to see these named ranges in a way that you'd like to. Okay, now my guess is that gets fixed at some future version of Excel. All right, so let's get rid of this and let's just work in one column right now. It doesn't really matter, but let's do five rows for a second. Okay, so let's say I want to format this, these rows with the output style. So this is some output. I'd like it to be formatted that way. Normally we go click on output style. There we go. And then this is, doesn't work very well because we do 10 rows that doesn't fit or we do three rows and we go, well, there's too much formatting. So the solution to this, let's get rid of this formatting, clear formats. So the solution to this is conditional formatting. Let's choose the five cells for now. I'm going to create a new rule conditional formatting. I'm going to format only cells that contain no blanks. So only cells that are not blank. If I click on format, I get my normal formatting box window that shows pops up, but lots of things are grayed out. So there's certain things we're not allowed to select. I have no idea why um, Excel has decided not to let me change certain things here, but they have. And so I'm going to reproduce what I can of the output style here. Now I've done this a million times, so I'll show you where to find the information in a minute, but we're going to change some things. So this mimics the output style. The output style is bold. The color of the text is a little weird. It's a custom color, 63, 63, 63. So I, for whatever good reason, know the RGB code or bad reason, probably know the RGB code for this color. That's the font. The border has outline and the fill again, a little weird one. This one is 242, 242, 242. So the RGB code is 242 repeated. Click OK, click OK. Now that's just highlighted those five cells. I often go back and fix this. So right now I'm just going to do the whole column. So anything, anything, any cell that's not blank in this column is going to get formatted in that way. Now, what am I doing with it? Let's change the number of rows to 10 and you can see now I've got 10 rows formatted that way. 15, I've got 15 rows, two, I have two rows. So that gives me the formatting like it's as if it were the output style, but only for the cells that contain things. Sometimes instead of doing the whole column D, because I might have like a header or something like that, I'll do D in this case, one to D 100. And then I'll restrict this input to be no more than a hundred so that I can make sure that my formatting works. All right, last little bit for this. If I click on the styles and right click on the output, I can modify. Now I'm not going to modify, but I can use this to figure out what's going on in the style that I want to mimic. So we can see here's the font, Calibri body 11. I can't change those. 
I'm allowed to set bold and I'm allowed to set the color. Again, it's telling me what the color is, RGB 63, 63, 63. Borders, left, right, top, bottom, so that's the outline. Fill shaded, that doesn't help me very much, so I have to go to Format, Fill, and you can see nothing selected. But if I go to More Colors, Custom, RGB, 242, 242, 242, that's what I typed in. So that's my output style. So if I wanted a different style calculation, I go to the calculation style, click Modify, there's my font. It's got this 250, 125 color. Borders, fill, shaded. Shaded is that 242, 242, 242, or you can go look, format, fill, more colors. There it is. Cancel. Okay, so that's how I've built this sheet so that this formats, as in this case, outputs, but is dynamic to go along with the range. And those two features I find really, really useful when I'm building spreadsheets. Like I said, for me, often this is like an investment horizon where this is my investment horizon input. And then sometimes I have 10 rows, sometimes I have five rows and that sort of thing. So I'm trying to build a tool, build a spreadsheet, which formats correctly, looks nice and manages the data well. The other thing is now I've got this range if I needed to refer to it, so this could be years instead of my data, I can refer to it in a formula somewhere else. I can do sum of my data and it adds all the data up. And if I expand the range, it adds up all the data. Okay, I hope that's a helpful video.